All right, everybody, this is Ross. In uh, today's video, we're gonna do a little bit of a demo for you guys um, on how to train your young fig trees. And these are gonna be trees that are in pots and containers. I have four trees here that I think uh, will really drive the point home and kind of accurately, I guess, give you some good examples of what your trees may look like at this current state or this current time um, in their younger age and then also what it is that we're trying to achieve so that you guys kind of have some good idea here of uh, some perspective and where it is that i'm going with my trees because i have as you guys just saw i mean there's a lot of these trees here um, that are in my experimental size so these are varieties that are in smaller pots that we are experimenting with the variety to determine so whether or not we're gonna keep them. And um, so as a result, I have a lot of these smaller trees and younger trees that we've added over the last two years. Um, some of which we rooted actually only three months ago. You can see some of these small ones down here were just now put into their five gallon size pots and they're kind of just getting adjusted and just kind of getting some growth actually some of them believe it or not only three months in from cutting actually have some fruits forming depends on the variety we also have i guess in this row here some older trees that maybe were rooted four or five months ago maybe they are trees that we had as rooted cuttings from the prior winter and we had rejuvenation pruned them and they're just now kind of making their comeback and putting out nice vigorous growth. And then we have some trees back in here, especially in this back corner that are quite tall. A lot of them have fruit on them and those were rooted, I think, from cutting about five or six months ago. So we're now in June and I started most of my rooting in January. Um, and then of course we have some just other experimental varieties here that uh, are in, older sizes, older trees that have been probably for two or three years now, and that's kind of what they look like. Um, there are also some troublesome, troublesome trees, but uh, the point is, is that we're gonna be looking at some of these, these younger and smaller trees to give you an idea of what it is that we're trying to go for. So I think that's really important first, is to determine what these trees should look like. This is a tree that's in its second year we actually had a rejuvenation pruned this in our video that we did. This is my black province. We took actually the cuttings and stuck them in the soil of what we pruned off. Um, and then we selected the most vigorous and healthy shoot this season to then make that vigorous and healthy shoot the main trunk of our tree. And then of course we topped it at a certain height and it put out some scaffolds. And actually it put out three, but this bottom one here isn't really getting the dominance. It's not at the same height. It didn't have the same vigor as the other two. So therefore that apical dominance is pushing um, a lot of pressure towards not growing anything lower on the tree. So what I had done is that I decided that these are gonna be my two main scaffolds here. We have two of them. These will be permanent. And these will form my fruiting branches for the following seasons, however many years I have my black province tree. And this is, of course, what we're trying to achieve in the first couple years is to get that main trunk single stemmed. You can top it at any height that you want as long as it is a single stem. You can even do that, let's say, at a, you know, a really low height. You, can, you could have a single stem trunk here, guys. Um, at a height that is, uh, you know, maybe only a couple inches off the ground, maybe like this particular variety here. Um, so even though it may have a, a lower trunk, we just want to have that one single trunk coming from the soil. That's a big recommendation for all trees, whether they're in the ground or in pots. They're more productive as trees, I find. Now, if we're doing this in the ground, I guess, just a quick little tip, because I, mainly this, is, this video is gonna be about um, getting these potted trees established. But uh, you know, if you're in a, a cold climate, your tree is gonna naturally wanna bush out, and it's gonna be very difficult to keep it as a tree. 
But if you can keep it as a tree, I would keep it as a tree. If you can't, then it just has to be a bush and that's just how it is. Um, and in that particular situation, there's two different thoughts, right? Um, so now that you have an idea of what our trees should kind of look like, this is an example here of what you could do. Excuse the noise there, guys. What you could do in um, another situation. So in the ground, let's say you want it to bush out. We have three different branches here coming from the base. We have one, two, and three, one here on the left. And that's just what it's gonna do, right? It's gonna bush out. And if you do this, you let it bush out and let it get all these different branches here at the base, um, you're gonna have a bigger tree quicker. You're gonna have a bigger root system. The more leaves and the more branches you have, that corresponds with a lot of what's going on down here. So if we really let this thing branch out, it's gonna form a bigger tree quicker. It's gonna be a more vigorous tree. You're gonna have more leaves to work with here in terms of photosynthesis. Now, if we wanted to have this thing fruit in its first year, which a lot of us probably do, um, here's another example of a tree that was trained just with one single stem that comes up from the cutting that was rooted. And this one single cutting, this one stem here, I'm sorry, has very nice, healthy, vigorous growth, and it's actually putting out some fruits. And because of that, it only has that one vigorous shoot um, it's more likely to fruit than if we had a number of different shoots. So it depends on what you want. Do you want to have multiple shoots to have a lot of growth, a larger root system, I should say, or do you want to have one single stem, probably with larger leaves, but it's going to have some fruit on it, but not necessarily the biggest root system uh, by the end of the season. Now, what I am going to do with both of these particular trees is they are gonna get trained into a single stem tree. It's just the approach um, starting out. You know, Do I wanna have more growth starting out or do I wanna have more fruit starting out? So as an example with this one here that has a bunch of shoots on it, I'm gonna choose the one that is the most vigorous, the most healthy, and I'm gonna get it to a certain height that I want and I'm gonna pinch off the tip. And that's actually what I'm gonna do also with this tree here that has only one shoot coming from the base, even though it has fruits on it already, I've already decided that this is at the height that I want it. It's got some nice healthy leaves on it that are big. I think the tree is um, in a really good state. So we're gonna just pinch off the tip as I did. We just took off the growth tip here. What that's gonna do, even though the fruits have already formed, it may accelerate that just a bit, that fruit formation, but it's gonna branch out here at this particular height. Similarly, if we had came in here in the wintertime and topped the tree during dormancy, we're now releasing that auxin. We uh, freed up the dominance in the tree. So now it's gonna send out new shoots that are gonna form the scaffolds. And that's sort of what I am achieving now in one season as I'm getting, not only do I have this single stem trunk here that's quite vigorous and healthy, I'm really pleased with it, that we don't have to rejuvenation prune, but now it's also gonna put out these scaffolds here by the end of the season. This particular tree, because it's a year older, not only does it have its scaffolds, but by the end of this season, it's gonna have some nice fruiting branches and maybe even a couple more scaffolds if I let it. Um, so yeah, quite interesting, I guess, and two different ways of doing this. Now, let's say we have this tree over here now i'm going to do the same thing right so the one that's the most vigorous and healthy which is probably this one on the left i'm going to come in here at a later date i'm going to take off this tip it's going to grow it's going to form the scaffolds now these other shoots here that are of lower height you can see they are about mm, a centimeter or so lower than the other branch this one's even more drastic a couple inches lower but we're gonna take off the tips actually off of these right now. So I'm gonna stop these guys from growing. They are going to then put out some new shoots because we pinched it, right? But I'm gonna stop those new shoots from forming. I'm gonna stop the growth here. I'm only using these shoots here for the leaves. These leaves give us a little bit of extra photosynthesis. It gave us a little bit of extra root growth here, uh, just the way that the hormones work in the tree. And now I'm satisfied with the one that I think is the most dominant, the healthiest, the most vigorous, 
it's going to give me a nice base for my tree in the future. So that's what I'm doing. I'm coming in here and I'm taking off the tips on these other ones. This guy here will continue to grow and maybe I'll get it a couple more inches higher. I'll take off the tip and then let it branch out to form the scaffolds that you guys see on these. So there's two different ways to do it, right? There isn't really a one size fit all answer for this. Now this tree over here also looks really good and it leafed out actually this season, similarly to this black province where we had topped it. As you can see right here, we actually topped it. It formed all these four scaffolds actually, instead of three like the other tree did. And um, the, particularly one of them is growing very vigorously. Now I have the option here because this one's so vigorous and this one seems really healthy and actually has some fruit on it because we pinched it, took off the tip. I have the option now of making this particular branch my main trunk and actually cutting out these other scaffolds if I want. I think I may end up keeping this particular scaffold here, but this one here and the one in the back, I could cut those out during dormancy and I could stop their growth right now, right? So in the same example as this, where we have the one on the left that's the most vigorous, that'll be our main trunk. These other two will get cut out during dormancy, right? We're stopping the growth now, we're making use of all these leaves, and then at some point we're cutting those out during dormancy to then have that single stem trunk form that we want. But this one here is so vigorous and healthy as an example that I could make this my permanent main trunk and just continue it from down here all the way up this way and have the scaffolds form from a higher height or on a base a trunk that I actually think may be more beneficial in the long run for the tree. I don't know, but what I'll do for, for sure is actually I'm gonna take off the, the tip off of this back scaffold here that is not really getting enough energy because of the way the hormones work. And I'm also gonna do the same thing to this particular branch here. Now, I think the best course of action is to let this guy here branch out, form a couple more scaffolds maybe, and this guy will form, continue to grow. I will not pinch it and it will continue to grow. And hopefully by the time this guy puts out some new branches, this guy will be at the same height and they won't necessarily be in too much competition with each other for that dominance. Um, and then therefore we'll have ourselves a couple scaffolds on these trees here and the form will be complete. From there, we just form our fruiting branches off of the scaffolds every year, right? We have our main trunk that branches out into our scaffolds and then from our scaffolds forms our fruiting branches every year, every season that then forms our main crop, right? Because the main crop forms on the new growth. So I think that's the story, Morning Glory. Um, yeah, there's not much else I want to cover. I think that uh, there's a million different ways to get to the same objective depends on what your tree looks like right uh, depends on what your cutting looks like depends on how you're approaching this but at the end of the day we should be trying to achieve a very healthy base to our tree if it's not really all that healthy we can come in here during dormancy we can prune off a lot of this growth and have it re-sprout and form a number of these different trunks to get it to select which one of these we like the most to then form our main trunk. Perhaps we really like our main trunk as it is and it's really healthy in the case of this tree. And then we form our scaffolds from there and then we form the fruiting branches and we're done. Um, and as I said, if we keep feeding these trees, we will get to a very high height. Um, and the earlier I find that you can start your cuttings indoors, the bigger benefit, the bigger size that your tree is gonna have at the end of your, your growing season, the following season after you do your rooting. So it's, uh, it's really not all that difficult, right guys? I hope this uh, really cleared some things up for people. And I hope that you guys will um, make use of this. I hope you guys learned something. Please, uh, if you enjoyed this, you got this far, hit the subscribe button for me. And also we will see you guys soon. Check out our blog, figboss.com. You can also see us on Facebook and Instagram. We'll see you guys for tomorrow's video.
Take care, guys.